This video is a note to self kind of video that will explain how to set up multiple ADCs on STM32F whatever processors. Now I'm using an STM32F303K8 uh, because I happen to have one, no, not for any special reason. Uh, and it's got two A to D converters, but it has many inputs to those A to D converters. And if you just want to use a single input, then it's relatively straightforward. You just set it up, kick off a conversion, wait for it, and then read the result back. But if you want to do multiple inputs, then it's a little bit more involved. And I'm going to show you how that's set up at the IOC level, and then also how it's dealt with in main.c as well. Okay, so rather than going through the pins and plucking out the ones that seem to be um, in the right sort of location or, or actually have the function that we want, what we're going to do is just go straight to here and say that we'll have whatever that one is single-ended and you'll see it's picked out to pin PA4 and we'll pick its little friends as well and the reason why I'm picking single-ended is that if you pick the differential ones they take two pins and all of a sudden it's more complicated. Okay so it's picked out uh, the, the relevant pins and turned the green which is great now for the setty uppy bit, and in the parameter settings tab, make it blue. Um, this is where it's all a bit confusing, so we'll go through it. Um, you need to use scan mode if you want to convert more than one input to any given A to D converter, in this case ADC2, but I can't click enabled, can't do it. And the reason is that you have to first of all tell it that you wish to perform three conversions. I don't know why it can't just look at what's up here and say, oh yeah, he wants three. Uh, and do the magic but there you go so three conversions and then once that's been done this automatically pings over to enabled so we're kind of happy that's super duper and, and if we go to the DMA settings the best way to get results from multiple inputs is just to let DMA handle it so it'll do the conversions and you give it a splurge of memory and they'll be automatically DMA'd over and then the ADC callback will be fired when that DMA um, com um, copying is complete. So let's say da 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 and everything by default is set up okay. It's a half word because these are 16-bit results of which 12 bits are usable. Um, we want it to autom automatically increment the memory location as it gets new data coming in, in this case three times. And um, we don't want it to do something weird with incrementing the peripheral, so we just leave that as it is. Everything there is precisely right. Okay, now if we go into the clock configuration, we notice that there's a problem, and it's the problem with this box here. Um, the reason why it's not a problem with this default, and I'm not quite clear why the default is wrong, is that if you don't have any A to D set up, then this ADC clock box is not lit, and therefore its input is irrelevant. But as soon as you have ADCs, its input becomes relevant, and it detects these problems. Uh, in this case the problem is that the output from the PLL has to be at least uh, 16 megahertz and here it's set to 4 by 2 megahertz which isn't going to work so we'll ping that up to 4 by 4 megahertz and now the ADC clock is 16 megahertz. I guess it could go higher, I don't know, uh, but that's fine, we'll keep it at that. Goody goody. So back to pin configuration and we are now good to go. So if I save this It'll do some device configuration for us. Ding -a ding 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 ding. And then we're ready to add the main uh, code. Now I've actually already done that, otherwise it's just clickety click clack on the keyboard and you'll get bored watching yourself again whenever you need to do this. So in the uh, user code begin private variable and end private variables, I've declared an array of size 3 to store the results uh, and each element is 16 bit uint 16t. Um, I've also declared a count that's just a long-winded way of saying three for use later on and then a, a, a flag that's used to say whether or not the conversion is complete remember to make things volatile if they are accessed by more than one thing and there's no way for the compiler to know when they'll get overwritten so I believe it's necessary to make these volatile correct me if I'm wrong future me okay so we've got some room for the results um, the number of results, it will always be three I believe, and a flag to say whether or not it's complete. This will only get set uh, in the callback function. Okay, so in our while loop, it's actually quite straightforward. We begin the conversion 
with a call to HAL ADC start DMA. Then we give it uh, the address of the structure uh, that represents that A to D converter. And then we give it the address cast to uint 32 t point two um, of, of the three result array. And then the, 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 that constant three there. Okay. And then we're doing nothing in this case whilst we're waiting for the conversion to complete and for the callback function to set this bit. But you could do something here instead if you wish to, no problem. Um, and once the results have been obtained, there's no need to, to get the results like there is in single uh, conversion mode. The results are automatically in that uh, ADC results DMA array. So here I'm just using snubprintf to print the results uh, in a vaguely legible manner and then beam those out to the UART to, so you can see it on the uh, screen and then waiting a bit and then carrying on. And I just realized actually there's something missing here. What we need to do is to um, kill ADC conversion complete at this point. Set it back to zero. Otherwise it'll just fall straight through next time and that would be wrong. Okay, so start, wait for the flag, clear that flag again, report, toggle a pin for happiness and then wait a bit and then go again. Okay, I mentioned that in the callback, this is set. So let's have a look at the callback. Um, there's a weak defined version so that if you don't write one, it doesn't fail to compile. Weak in this context means pretty much that it can be overridden by another non-weak um, declaration of the same function name. Uh, so this is in STM uh, HAL ADC uh, and it's weak and as I said it's kind of a placeholder uh, and it's that that we're overwriting. So let's have a look at our definition. It's exactly the same here minus the week and all it's doing is setting that bit to say hey yeah world by the way the conversion is complete you're supposed to do if hadc equals equals the relevant one but i've only got one ADD converter fired up at the moment so there's no reason to expect it not to work so let's compile that and see if it does things no errors no warnings what we like put that into the machine bring up a terminal and express happiness if it works. Yay, there it is. If I touch the pins where I think the entity converters are, you should see, yeah, yeah, there you go. There's some numbers changing. Obviously they're high impedance and I'm just kind of touching them and doing Remember God to knows what the voltage. Oh yeah, no one's but watching. You can see that there's some and love your mother. Happiness there. But in a nice way. Good. We are happy. End of story.